that's all I that's all I have going for today. So yeah. Soup there it is. Soup there it is. Yeah, no, I've been making soup today. Very nice. It's, it's fall. It's autumnal. It's chicken bone broth. Mmm, making it all from scratch. Yeah, that's what I that's yeah, that's the fascinating life of a podcaster. Now you know a bit more about it. Oh. Yeah, I'm probably going to make soup today, too. I feel like it is just that season, though, right? Like, where I want to make all of the chili and all of the soups and stews. Yeah, and just I just sit by I, the fireplace with my tea and just... I want my food to be hot and liquid. Mm-hmm. And I want to sit with a cozy blanket on. And I have a weighted blanket. Ooh. You're lucky I'm out from under it right now. Yes. Oh, I love that fucking thing so much. Thank you yeah. so much, Erica. Yeah, Nick's mom got me that for Christmas last year. She's the nice. best. Nice. See, yeah, I feel like a weighted blanket or like a honestly just a duvet, a nice heavy duvet mm-hmm. is just mm, yeah. for real. Though, once you've had one of those twenty pound blankets wrapped around you, you're just like, ah, oh, this is good. This is great. Um, although sometimes I wonder if it is actually great when I'm like super depressed. I'm like, just lay under the weighted blanket. <laughs> just lay under that. Uh, let, let the weight of the world in this blanket sink you further and further into your temperpedic mattress. Yes. And there's there's a, a show on Apple TV with Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And then I can't, oh, remember, I can't remember the actor's name, but he's Alana's roommate in Broad City. Do you know what oh, I'm talking about? Oh, Jaime Arturo Castro. I think, sure. I don't, I, I don't remember his name, but sure. I know that he's Jaime in, in Broad City. But they're, they're roommates in this show and like Joseph Gordon-Levitt is like, you know, depressed and has a severe anxiety, really severe anxiety and stuff. And, you know, they're looking up stuff to try to solve this problem. And then it's like, oh, get a weighted blanket, right? <laughs> and, and it's like, I can't, I can't fucking afford a weighted blanket. And so the next clip is just a thin blanket on Joseph Gordon-Levitt and then just the other guy lying on top saying, is this helping? Like... <laughs> Excellent. Oh, right. that's fun. I'll have to steal your Apple TV passcode and watch it because I'm too poor for Apple TV. Um, yeah, it sounds uh, it sounds pretty great. Um, a lot of good shows. Yeah. On there. yeah hey. Sounds like. I was what? supposed to. Do- what? What time is it? You know what time it is? I think that it might be ten. What? <laughs> we set the dog up <laughs> with our terrible singing. Okay, I got the squirt bottle. Gambit. Settle down. You're fine. The poor dog. He's fine. Oh, is he though? He, no, he was he set just, off by terrible, terrible singing. He just wanted to join in. You know, he did. He sure he, did. He didn't um, want it to yeah. be a, a duet. Welcome, a, a trio, if you will. Um, yeah. Welcome, welcome, you guys, to Tin Hat Time, the podcast of the strange and unusual. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Hannah Jane. Over there's the other one, Megan. She's here too. Hi. Hello. Yep. And there she is, physically I, present. I, I, I exist. Uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> you keep telling them, Megan. Hey, uh, what are we talking about, though? Because you have been elusive and Ooh. have not told me what we're talking about this week. Yeah, and I'm so I'm into it. Very excited. I've been uh, doing my research on this since before we were doing the last week's podcast. Um, yeah, so I've been researching this one for a while. So I'm going to attempt to go off book. I do have all of my notes here, though. But um, today, we're going to be talking about the strange and fascinating life and very mysterious death of Jack Parsons. Oh, we did talk about Jack Parsons. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think when we were talking about him, I kept calling him Jim Parsons. And you were like, that's the guy from fucking Big Bang Theory. Uh. No, I think it's because is this guy who was involved in like uh, the atomic bomb building? Like, no. the, okay, I think no. there's another guy in history. You're, no, I know what you're thinking. You're on the right path, but you're wrong. Mm. You're just mixing up your facts. Okay, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. I'm <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting corrected then. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I'm deeply looking forward to correcting you. Oh, yes. we'll do now. Oh man, Jack Parsons <laughs> is a correct me all day yes yes i can (laughs) um and i will and i do and it's fun for me 
Um, no, Jack Parsons is one of like the secret architects of the 20th century and beyond. He's he should be so much more famous and well known than he is. I think he's known to like people in our little like crossover groups of like weird interests, and we spent too much time reading shit in books and in libraries and on the internet mm-hmm. instead of having real life friends. Yeah, just going down rabbit holes. It's very yeah, funny. yeah. Jack Parsons was a fellow rabbit hole going down guy, and he was yeah. <laughs> let's just dive. He is amazing. He was a super freak super freak he's super freaky meow um <laughs> i had to finish the song um i was so, i was just waiting for you to finish it out so so he was born marvel whiteside parsons on october 2nd 1914 in la to a very wealthy family his uh, father's name was also marvel so um as a boy he went by jack thank god um why marvel yeah well why would if your name is fucking marvel why would you go by jack um as a boy he would let me finish the sentence and then you'll understand as a boy he was very much into rockets and science science and he was often teased for being effeminate by his shitty little peers and also um during he had a rough weird childhood let me get through this little clump of facts and then we'll okay. go back and talk it a little bit more. okay okay so um at 14 he began a lifelong friendship with this uh other kid edward foreman and the two of them start blowing shit up together all over the place okay um also at this time he around this time he tried to summon the devil in his bedroom at night and was terrified that he had accidentally done it maybe he did foreshadowing yes okay okay i like it <laughs> it is foreshadowing um so young Jack Parsons, Marvel, if you will, his early life was fraught with bullshittery and misery brought on by his parents' tumultuous and shitty relationship um, and a very messy divorce after his mother discovered that um, Marvel, the senior, the elder Marvel, uh, mm-hmm. was really into visiting sex workers. Yeah. And he liked doing that more than he liked paying for like stuff for his wife and kid in their home. Mm. So at the time, so this is in like the twenties, dude, like divorces were not common. And so it was a big messy ordeal. And then after um, the elder Marvel leaves the family, uh, he kind of drops off. There's not a lot of information. Like I found a lot of like conflicting information on this guy. He either died pretty quickly there afterwards or he joined the army and had another family with another son whom he named charlie like a regular human um the end well that, i mean that sounds honestly kind of, unfortunately kind of common back then yeah. right but, Is- um, so yeah so his mom hated his dad so much that she refused to call her son marvel any longer and changed his name to jack so that's another reason but you'll see in his future why he should have gone back to being called marvel like 100 percent, he should have been because he could have been like yeah captain marvel like yeah he could is that who it's based on not remotely at all unfortunately i don't think um i wouldn't honestly get it anyway i've seen none of the marvel movies so i like that one but actually i just like captain marvel because she's ooh. God, buy panic all over that film. Is that Brie oh Larson? God. Yeah, it is. There's okay. one of them where her hair's like real short and it's like a good like undercut. And, like it's like, oh, I'm just like, what's happening right now? I'm supposed to be sad because it's like a main character's funeral, but I don't care. I just want to go and talk to Captain Marvel. It's like watching that um, motocross Disney movie cross. Oh my cross- God, where she dresses up like a boy and you're just like, <laughs> what am I doing? Just right like now? all yeah. over again? Like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Even yeah. Or she-, she had a terrible Chad Michael Murray haircut. It didn't matter. No. I it was didn't. into it. It was, it was one of those, like, do I want to be her? Or do I want to be with her? I don't understand. <laughs> what yet another time where I felt like I had to pee, but I didn't actually have to. <laughs> <sighs> but moving, anyway, on, moving on so as a young man this is actually it's it's appropriate that we're this horny for this episode and we'll get to that um it's it's great 
ah, oh, this is one of my, he's my, one of my favorite weird characters in American history. And he, I just feel like more people should know about Jack Parsons and all that okay. he's done. Okay. So tell us. So tell as us a young man, he w- um, attended the prestigious uh, Pasadena Junior College and Stanford University, but he had to drop out during the Great Depression because even though he was from a wealthy family, the Great Depression, yeah, it was starting to dwindle around. So in 1934, Parsons, his bud Foreman, and um, Frank Molina, they formed together, they united to form a Caltech-affiliated lab called the Guggenheim Aeronautical Laboratory. Oh, Cal- okay. Yeah. Which later would become JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratories. Yeah. Which is later fucking NASA. Like, this is how NASA becomes. Okay, so I'm, I was somewhat correct then. This yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you were getting close. So he was an you astrophysicist? Licking the sides of it, yes. Okay, he was okay. Super into, he was super into rockets. Like, from a young man, he was like, <laughs> right? Because they look like penises. <laughs> so sorry. Um, just, like you okay go on go on he was really into it and like everybody was like rockets are dumb jack you're dumb and you sound like a girl and he was like rockets aren't dumb and we're gonna go to the moon with them one day i imagine he has the weird little lift um because he's probably pretty cute and he was like 11 anyway so jack parsons like never gave up on his like i'll like one he's the original fucking rocket man he was like we're gonna go to the goddamn moon yeah. and he really wanted to like make rocket because rockets were like made fun of and like they weren't like a thing that was taken seriously even though like that's how we got into outer space and he with um foreman and molina figured out basically a lot of so much mathy science went into this and some other stuff too that we're going to circle back around to a lot of mathy science um that i don't understand and maybe we can get kevin to come on next week and explain it to us but basically he made like solid jet fuel which is how they were able to do a lot of jet propulsion things for world war ii like the army linked up with these dudes Mm -hmm. um just as we were getting into world war ii and we're like it seems like you guys know how to make rockets that could really blast off some really cool shit what if you stop fucking around by this weird dam and you know dicking around all the time and like we'll come and get you some cash so was he a part of like the manhattan project then no okay no okay i he thought was part he was of JPL. okay i thought he was somehow a part of like atomic bombs so it's he's no yes but no no, like- not really at all. Like I've done a lot of reading about this dude this past couple weeks, and he—I never once saw Manhattan Project. Um, so I think you're—I think you're entirely thinking of somebody different, or you're getting jet propulsion and because it did like help make like bombs and rockets and shit. Yeah. Okay. I'm like all it right. basically helped us win World War II. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now we're gonna get fun and weird. We're gonna kind of like circle back a little bit, so like we're like in the same timeline as like the Caltech. Guggenheim, Galset things. And like, so in 1939, Parsons was, he was searching for a spiritual something. He was not into Christianity. He did not like it at all. He didn't like organized religions. He thought they were all a bunch of bullshit. And so he was looking for something new, something that was unique, something that he could really like sink his dick into, if you will. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just wasn't expecting that. <laughs> okay, go on. Go on. <laughs> he finds the Lema, which is a new religious mo- movement that was founded by Aleister Crowley. Oh, Philema. Oh, so yeah. it was more Thalema. about fellatio. <laughs> like- yeah, it was fellatio, pretty much. Um, and Aleister Crowley is also like among the most fascinating dudes in fucking history. So Crowley teaches um, Parsons and they start like this relationship where Parsons calls Crowley his um, his his devoted father. And he always signs. All <laughs> I movies. was going to say daddy. <laughs> but basically. Yeah. He's daddy like to my devoted father Crowley. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then he always signs it. Thy faithful son. Mm. John. Because sometimes he called himself John, who's okay. John or Jack or Marvel. And also his middle name is Whiteside, which is like lame and weird. Yeah. 
but whatever moving on so he and alistair crowley crowley i'm gonna keep saying crowley because i've also been rereading good omens so I'm, i'm mixing it up a little bit there um so Parsons and his first wife, Helen, they joined the Lamos uh, Ordo Templi Orientis, or the OTO, as we will call it for now. Oh, sorry, Ordo Templi Orientis. It's okay. important okay. you say magic words correctly. Oh. Um, the OTO, their Californian branch called Agape Lodge. <laughs> There's a lot of gaping happening in that lodge, too. Like, I'm going to be I, real. I, like, are they it's doing this sex shit? magic thing? Are they doing that on? on purpose though like are they naming this shit on purpose or is it just like it was happens. this Crowley's horny ass will to just be like everything's gonna sound a little bit dirty as I power bottom my way across the land um probably uh, I don't know should we fill listeners in on who Crowley is if they don't know or oh don't- I was gonna get to a, a quick okay. little Crowley thing so that's actually what I was doing right now okay so <laughs> So Parsons um, joined the uh, the California branch of the Agape Lodge. <laughs> um, so the Oro, or the OTO, because it's difficult to say correctly. It was like Crowley is, oh God, one of the most fascinating dudes. He is also another one of those secret architects of modern history. Um, he's one of the most famous wizards of all time, except for maybe Merlin. Um, and now then the Harry Potter world, but like, whatever, like real wizards. Um, he was a real wizard, dude. He like did a lot of sex magic things. He, um, definitely summoned a moon child. There's a lot of, there's a lot to Crowley that I'm not going to do justice right now. I'm going to kind of go, I'm basically going off of, if you are listening to this, you have a base knowledge of who Crowley was and that he was a magician-y weirdo that was really into sex magic. Okay. I think that's a pretty good summary, right? Yeah. Like, I'm going to do a whole Crowley bit at some point, but it's a lot, dude. There's a there's a lot of reading, and it's complicated. Yeah. And I'm once again turning into somebody who can't have a civilized inner conversation. Um, cheers. Bottoms up, if you will. <laughs> That's how Crowley liked it. Um, <laughs> for fucking real, though, he he and Parsons were just like fucking everything and like. Well, I thought Crowley at one point magic. has a he, like he's quoted and like I'm getting this info from the last podcast on the list, but he was quoted as like he really enjoyed being a bottom. Yeah, like Crowley was he, like, "Wow, it's magical and fucking." It's the most magical and devious thing you can do. Mm-hmm. I'm into it. It's also hot. Yeah, get it, Crowley. Know what you're into, um, and then ask for it. Yeah. But yeah, so Parsons and Crowley are fucking all over everything, and his first wife Helen is involved, and she's like kind of into it, but like she's like, all right, this is, I guess we're all gonna bone mm-hmm. for a while now. But Crowley was trying to teach Parsons, and not trying, he very much succeeded in teaching Parsons about sex magic. So. The whole thing about sex magic is that the idea behind it is that when you come or reach orgasm or whatever, Mm -hmm. then there's a lot of energy that's pent up and released out into the universe. And if you can take your thoughts and like really focus your energy on something, then as you splooge, you can like focus that magical intention on it and then make it like into reality. So while Parsons is learning all about all this stuff from Crowley, he's also working at JPL. Okay. So he's like, you know what I could do is I could write the sigil of a rocket and jerk off all over it, wanking all over everything, all over all of these sigils. And then like sticky. It is sticky. That's also maybe what bound the jet propulsion fuel together. <laughs> wank filled sigils that got us to the goddamn moon. This the sticky icky got us to the moon, dude. For real, I think that I think that Jack Parsons may have legitimately wanked on enough sigils that we got to the moon. I'm I've started to believe that from from not my, science, not 
I no, that. science was absolutely a part of it. So for Jack Parsons, magic and like science and rocketry were this were two sides of the same coin. They could be used together. So, and rocketry was something that was disregarded and like said it was dumb and magic was something that was the same thing and he really wanted to bring them together bring it to the forefront and just make them kiss just well make them fuck and then like sploosh a, a magic rocket all over the world's face I wish that I had a classier way of putting it, but this is the horniest dude in the whole world who hooked up with another one of the horniest dudes in the entire world. You're and now smart. we've got You're a rover on Mars. Okay. Okay. All right. Go on. Because I do have some speculation. I, I'll, I'll bring it you up. You save it for corner. speculation corner. Gambit. Stop. So, um... So while he's doing all of these experiments at JPL and creating the solid jet fuel, he's also like legit coming into the office and being like, do you guys mind if I like draw a sigil on this stuff? And they're like, <laughs> okay, Jack, uh, he's weird, but he, he knows how to do the, the explosive <laughs> stuff. He's real good at it. And he's like, ah, blah, 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 blah. and uh, he would like recite some of Crowley's like um, poems and stuff, like mm-hmm. as a, like a mantra kind of a deal before they would shoot off missiles and, like Foreman and and Molina were like, cool, Jack. <laughs> Are you done yet? Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. And people would go over to Jack Parsons' place, which he called the Parsonage. Pressure. Where he was like just kind of fucking on everything uh, with his half hearted wife and her, her sister, who was real into it. Um, <laughs> was also there. I would hope there were a few people in between the sisters, the sisters. yeah it doesn't seem like they're probably were Ooh. yeah uh they had a whole thing with the oto and like with crowley saying and like parsons um personal philosophy was that anything that disgusted you or frightened you or like whatever anything taboos anything like that you had to examine it and look at it and get in it and like see why does this make me like yeah like crowley one time famously ate human shit as it came out of his girlfriend and then got real sick couldn't finish the turn just puked all over everything like that's like a thing that he did because he was and like parsons kind of had a similar but different idea of it like with the with the whole um do as thou wilt shall be the whole of the law it's like figuring out your will for parsons that part of that was going into the deepest and darkest territories of the mind and the body and like what you thought and like big taboos and that kind of thing and breaking it down we're gonna get into some much weirder okay, shit I, later. I don't want to kink shame anyone but poo play is a little uh... no thank you it just feels unsanitary and there has to be a fun and different alternative melt yeah, some chocolate I just, and make pretend yeah I just... <laughs> so um, in 1942 at Crowley's bidding, uh, Jack Parsons becomes the lodge leader of the Agape Lodge. And in 1944, he was expelled from JPL because of his involvement with the Notorious Lodge and being a fucking weirdo at work all the time. Yeah, but isn't it his company? Yeah. So he got kicked out of his own fucking yes. company? Yes. Yeah. Was By it his a public... Like, so, like... Oh, like, the army owned it. Like, they were, like, contractors now. Like, he wasn't, like, the, like... Yeah, no, but they were like, listen, dude, you, uh, you're you doing weird shit at this lodge. Every time anyone tries to come over to your house for a dinner, you've got this weird snake wrapped around you and you're not wearing a lot of clothes and you're asking us to fuck your wife. And we'd all like you to stop coming to work now because we don't trust you with explosives anymore for many, many reasons. I mean, I feel like that's a reasonable request. It feels valid, right? So he was really goddamn bummed that he uh, got sacked from this organization that he created. And then in 1945, Jack and Helen split up. And then Helen starts to hook up with her sister because she was really into sex magic orgies. Helen was a bit of a square. Wait, wait. Wait, she was a square, but she was hooking up with her sister? She may or may not have been hooking up with her sister. Nobody's found that. That's me being wildly speculative and possibly, what is it, libelous? Slander? One of the two. I don't mean anything that I say. I think people know that by now. But um, so 
here's where things continue to get weird and bummery. <sighs> okay. So Jack Parsons doesn't have a lot going for him right now. His wife has left him. He's sleeping with her sister and he's still trying to do like sex magic stuff. He's like taking like odd jobs. He starts working for the Israelis, which like the government was like, the fuck you doing there, Jackie boy. Um, And he loses his security clearances and stuff. And like, everything's kind of going to a bummer. And he's like, the fuck am I going to do? I'll tell you what he does, my friend. He decides he's going to summon the whore of Babylon to be his scarlet woman and uh, so he can impregnate her and that they can make the moon child and complete the moon child ritual that Aleister Crowley had written about in one of his novels. And so he does, he calls his buddies over and they're like, what are we doing here, Jackie? And he's like, Shh, listen, I'm going to jerk off onto this thing and I, I want that. you to do it too. And they were like. So is it just a circle jerk? He pretty much in, about, like, invited his friends over. Biscuit, um, that, shoulder to shoulder, guys. Like, let's just get on this like little itty bitty disc. Like, yeah. And uh, here's the thing, though. To some, he summoned his scarlet woman was what it was called, and she shall be Babylon and the one who bringeth forth the moon child and all this stuff that's going to bring in the great awakening and things. And also. Maybe Jack was just horny because no one wanted to fuck him at the orgies anymore. Who's to say? Um, Maybe this but is the someone... weird part about it is that it worked. How did it work? Uh, in that a few days later, Jack met a woman at one of the parties in his own home that he didn't realize he was throwing kind of a Gatsby situation happening at the parsonage quite often. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was this beautiful redheaded woman. And her name was um, Marjorie Cameron, but she went by Candy. And Candy was just like, what's up, Jack Parsons? Mm." And he's like, you're my scarlet woman. She's like, you're goddamn right I am. Let's go fuck it out. And then they stayed in bed for two weeks. This seems to sound enjoyable to me. But no, um, this also feels midlife crisis-y more yeah, than Yeah, no, it's going to get worse. Else. It's like, not going to get better. It's this not gonna seems like a guy who lost his job and his wife left him and he's spiraling. <laughs> like, this sounds less sex magic and more of like, I'm panicking and I don't know what to do with my life. Yeah, but he did summon a scarlet woman to him and she was like into it. She participated in all of the sex magic things and she was like, he was oh, like, listen. I don't own you. You go out and fuck anyone you want to. I'm going to fuck anybody who wants to fuck me too. It's going to be great. And she was like, dope. I'm going back to New York. If I come back, it'll be the real deal. And we'll know that I'm your super scarlet woman. He was like, awesome. Catch you later, babes. And then she left and uh, somewhere. Okay. So I've got my timeline confused a little bit here because at some point, Sarah, the sexy sister, Mm-hmm. And Jack, they're still hooking up. There's a lot of like free range pussy, if you will. Okay. Just well, everyone's love. In- yeah. Right. And so who should also wander into their lives at this time? Then Crowley. L. Ron Hubbard. Oh, yeah. They ran in the same. I thought L. Ron Hubbard and like Crowley were like homies. Yeah. Yeah. But, Pr- but this is when um, Parsons beats him and he's like, oh, my God, L. Ron Hubbard, you're a dope dude you're like a writer and stuff fuck yeah and hubbard's like what's up parsons and he's like you're rad you should also come over to my house and like see my giant snake and fuck my wife wait which and snake both <laughs> either <laughs> we, i think he had a rather average penis um uh is it documented that way like I, yes actually um, oh, also in his fbi case because he was um investigated for myriad things um he was labeled as a potential bisexual mm, those so risky ass bisexual super dangerous yeah oh. we're wily you never know where we're gonna pop up with our finger guns and our clear phone cases I definitely have a clear phone case. So. Yeah, yeah, mine's clear with glitter in it, but it's still clear. Um, so L. Ron Hubbard and Sarah are having a good time. Jack's having a good time. Everyone's having a good time. Then everything stops being a good time. You know, this is like around the same time. So Jack's like kind of like we're like doing a little bit of a back pedal to get to this part of it. Okay. Um, I could really do like four episodes on this dude. There's so much. So. Jack is like, fuck, dude, I don't know what to do. Like, I got fired. My sex magic isn't magicking the way that I thought it was going to. 
and I don't know what to do. And L. Ron Hubbard says, listen, man, I know. I know what we should do. I, you should, you should give me $20,000, the last of your money. And then me and Sarah, your wife, I don't think they were legally married. Me and Sarah are going to go to Florida and we're going to buy some boats and we'll sail them back to California. And then we'll, we'll, we'll sell them. We'll set up like a boat empire. And Jack goes, holy shit, L. Ron, that sounds like a really goddamn good idea. And he gives L. Ron Hubbard $20,000, the last of his money, like a little bit more than that. What is this the sixties? No, this is in like the late forties. Oh my God. That's yeah, like, it's a shit ton of money. It's a shit ton of money. It's his life. Like a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars. I like- didn't do the money math on it. Um, because I didn't. Oh my God. That's so he gives him a fucking money. shit ton of money and his wife. And he kisses them both on the cheeks and he says, Fare thee well, my dear friends and my dear woman. I shall see you soon. They're like, yeah, okay. And then basically like month a month goes by and then Jack starts to be like Oh, shit. Yeah. You guys think maybe L. Ron Hubbard stole my wife and all my money and isn't going to come back? And everybody else was like, yeah, dude, that clearly is what happened. Like, we saw that happening as it was happening. And it's bizarre that you didn't. So he calls up L. Ron and he's like, could you give me my money back? And he's like, no, as a matter of fact, I can't. And I'm going to take my boat and your wife and we're going to go out into the Florida Keys and we're going to fuck all over everything. <laughs> This was Jack the wife Carson. that was a square? No, this is the sister. This is the sexy oh, sister. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. Helen left this whole situation and was just like, I'm never looking back at these fucking creeps ever again. Okay. So was so that wasn't Candy, the whore of Babylon. No, Candy the Whore of Babylon is like in the background of this story as well. Okay. But she's not like involved in this part of it, but they're like happening at the same time. Okay. All right. All right. I'm into it. Yeah. So, like, as Jack is being like, where the fuck is L. Ron Hubbard and that woman, my wife, kind of. And he's also like, I'm going to summon the whore Babylon. Wank. Um, and then she shows up to the parsonage at one of the big parties. So, like, everything's kind of happening at once. Okay. Okay. I'm following. So, man, what a bummer. <laughs> yeah. So, so Jack is like, oh, you're going to fuck with me? Did you forget that I learned fucking magic from fucking Alistair Crowley, you piece of shit potato bodied asshole to L. Ron Hubbard? And then he summons with all of his magical power, a dark storm to come and sink him to the bottom of the sea, which it didn't quite do. But there did come a great storm that night and Elrond Hubbard and his wife had to return back and their boat got all fucked up. And then while it, after they got back, Jack Parsons like lunged and like tied up the boat and was like, technically I own this because you stole fucking money from me. So you can either give me back the boat, give me the boat, or you can give me fucking $20,000. It's up to you, Elrond. And then Elrond gave him 20 grand back and was like, could you just leave? And then he did. And his wife was like, goodbye. And she's like, I'm not your wife anymore. And then he went back and then. So and then, this happened in Florida, but like he, I thought they were in California. in California. He lives in California, but Elrond and Sarah went to Florida to like buy boats to bring back to California, which they weren't ever going to do. So Jack went down there to like be a dick about it and like make some magic and then tie up their boat when they had to come back in because of the magic storm. Okay. Okay. Are you following? Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. So, so then Jack um, summons Marjorie, Candy, Carmen, or uh, Cameron, and then she goes to New York, but she comes back. And they're, like, into it and they're having a good time, except for they're kind of not because, like, Jack can't really hold down a job. Um, and he's being investigated for being a Israeli spy, which is probably true. And so – and the whole Marjorie thing isn't going great because it turns out that when you summon a scarlet woman and you want your woman to be, like, this sexually liberated and free, like – manic pixie dream girl Mm -hmm. then um that's not someone with whom you can have a stable relationship yeah yeah Yeah. so in june of uh 1952 um like 
Jack and Candy, Marjorie, the Scarlet Woman, are they're planning on leaving the country. Everything's shitty. They're like, fuck it, we're out. He's quit the OTO. He's done with Crowley. Crowley was being a bitch and everyone's being a bitch. So he's done with it and they're going to go to Israel. I'm like, he's going to do rockets for them now. Nah. Okay. Um, so now's where we get to the mysterious death of Jack Parsons. So he's decided he's mm-hmm. leaving the country. And he had been taking on odd jobs for the movie industry being in Pasadena in Southern California. So he would like, they're like, oh, we need this thing to blow up. Hey, Parsons, come over and blow it up. You you used to do that for the military. And he'd be like, my life is in shambles. You're not wrong. (laughs) Um, So he, um, he gets this last minute order for this thing. They're like, we need it tonight. You have to go and make it right now. And so Jack's like, okay. And he goes into his shed and he's like mixing together stuff and then blows up. Home is dead. Meth lab style. Yeah. Um, And his final words were, I wasn't finished or I wasn't done yet, Um, which is kind of a bummer. How how did someone get his last words? He wasn't dead immediately from like he was in there. Half of his face is blown off Harvey Dent style. He was missing one whole arm chunk of the other. I was going to not describe his the gore fest, but he was just, you know, there and they were like, oh, no. Yeah. And he was like, I wasn't finished. And then he, he sunk down to the bottom of the ocean. Jack. No. It's a Titanic joke. I know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. That's very tragic. And God, I you're bad feel at me. shame, but I don't. Um, yeah, his uh, his mother upon so this is gonna be a real happy ending to the whole thing. Um, upon hearing that her son was dead, her his mother killed herself. Oh, she um started into a panic, and her roommate, who was like wheelchair bound arthritic was like called like a doctor friend to come over like she needs a pill yeah fucking right now and so like homie gives her a pill and like leaves the bottle there and goes into the kitchen to get her some water i'm like and then she goes well five more and then like dies and then allegedly there was found and this is this is this is coming to us from i believe the dollop okay which is yeah um, very, very credible source highly credible they're a pretty good podcast they've done a lot of research okay. but also apparently there was a black box that was found that had some videotapes of jack parsons and in, in, um also oh yeah i forgot i should bring up this part too so the police officers couldn't get onto the uh suicide scene because um mrs parsons had this great big giant fuck off dog mm-hmm. and after it attacked one of the police officers they shot it Oh, wow. so it's just like a really died. bummer day for the whole family. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, but then afterwards, allegedly, allegedly, a black box was found in which there were videotapes of Jack Parsons engaging in both incest and bestiality with the mom and the dog. <laughs> so we go back around to like those taboo things getting broken down. And he's a fascinating, bizarro land, weird guy. So there's a lot Once of again want to th- throw up in my mouth. Yeah. Right. Just I am really glad that I had that information and I needed to get it out. So now I you, didn't need to know that. But now you do. Now you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now you do. Mm. Mm. So um, you're welcome. So there's a lot of speculation and conspiracy and weirdness around Jack Parsons' death. Was it just that he was also a struggling with drugs at this point in his life and was a bit shaky in an explosive lab and blew himself up? Probably, but that's not as much fun as these other things I'm going to bring up. Okay. Was he doing a magic ritual that went awry? Like, there's no contestant that he blew himself up. But I also think, like, a lot of his peers and people that worked with him were like, Jack was super spot on with his explosives like he didn't make little mistakes like not usually not that's not his thing Mm -hmm. so some people think that he was exploded by the u.s government because they knew he was going to go over to israel and um start making bombs for them and stuff and they couldn't have that and then some people speculate that he was killed in a revenge spell that was done by um crowley and hubbard 
and or Hubbard um, because they were pissed at him for being a little bitch. Mm-hmm. So they made him blow himself up. And he was in a, uh, the victim of a magical attack. Um, or the most likely thing is that he was just stoned out of his gourd and dropped some explosives. Yeah. I would, honestly, based on the time period, I would put money on the U.S. government. Yeah, like, I think he like, was like wholeheartedly. Fifty-two, absolutely. The McCarthyism shit, and he like been yeah investigated a bunch. They had dropped his security clearances. They had tabs on him at all time. Like it would have been really easy to blow him up. I mean, and, like, like a fake order came in. Like it, like a we need it tonight. Explosives order for that's weird. Well, if he was planning on going over to Israel, right? Like I think at that point, I don't think the U.S. government had acknowledged Israel as a state yet. Mm -hmm. And they were trying really hard to do a lot of containing of communism and all sorts of shit in Europe. I mean, Mm -hmm. because this is immediately following World War II. Like, they were pretty heavily invested in what was going on over there and really didn't want anything um, to get in the hands of the USSR. So I I would really put a lot of money on that if he had the knowledge. So. Oh, yeah. And he did. He held the key. Because at that uh, point, the U.S. government was also the only uh, power to have nuclear weapons. Mm-hmm. Nobody had it. Nobody had nuclear weapons or any technology. Um, I think it was a couple years after that that Russia got to the moon. Or not to the moon, but to space. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so all of the things that Parsons invented and was a part of and like created if you will like we're the shit that got us to the moon got us onto the mars rover got the hubble telescope out into space all of that stuff so like you can't discount his um contribution to aeronautical sciences like he's a big fucking deal for it he found a jpl like it's his initials so but i also think like it's funny Here's a fun little little fun fact that I'll I'll end my thing on, and then we can go into speculation and chit chat. Mm-hmm. Um, it nobody denies how important he was, but people don't like, especially the scientific community, don't like to uh, uh, talk about it. Yeah, about him and like his weird sex magic and all that stuff. So there is a crater on the moon that's named for Jack Parsons, mm-hmm. but it's on the dark side of the moon. Mm. No one will ever see it. So it's kind of like. That's exactly perfectly representational of like super important. Absolutely couldn't have gotten here without him. Let's not talk about it anymore though. Yeah. Like we'll still remember it by putting it in a file and then filing it away and never talking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They tried to Raiders of the Lost Ark him, but ha, fuck you. Yeah. I mean, that sounds about right. I mean, Mm -hmm. to be honest, probably not just the sex magic stuff, but like also him being bisexual more than anything right yeah that was um that that's deeply problematic at the time yeah yeah i mean there's lots of like fuck who's the guy there was a guy i can't remember whether he's american or not but he uh cracked the nazi code or the german code or whatever and like yeah and like he ended up they like castrated him like he was a eunuch um after that at some point like because he was gay like and yeah no i history's dark as shit right like the more (laughs) it's very very dark because we obviously we just talked about about eugenics a little bit last week i think right did we i don't know i don't remember oh no that was for penhurst yeah 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 we get into some dark dark territory occasionally um but yeah that's jack parsons in a nutshell um that he blew himself out of what year did he die again? 52. Hang on. Gambit! Settle down. I love him, but he's not a smart dog. The 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 growls are kind of funny. Like, he gets like, a bark sometimes caught in his throat. Settle down, buddy. You're fine. Um, yeah, neighbor's dog had the audacity to make a sound. Okay, good boy. Uh, it's an interesting story, though. Like, mm-hmm. I would, I would be interested to learn more about uh, Parsons' relationship with Crowley. Yeah, right? and like how they interacted and stuff. Um, yeah, that would be. There's a lot, dude. There's just a lot to this guy. Like, I could have done a whole thing on just the Moonchild. Really? 
Oh yeah. And like the summoning of Marjorie and like the, the and Babylon and she like the she shall be Babylon thing. Like that's so did she get pregnant or something? Like what uh, like the moon child I had to branch off. I didn't do a whole lot of research into that. I don't think the moon child was ever brought forth, but there is argument to be made that because of the many, 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 many times that they performed the spells and like all of the magic that was put out on like the intention and thought that like a lot of the awakenings of the late 50s and the 60s and that kind of stuff could be attributed to them. Like he could be more closely attributed to the uh, counterculture movements than like some more famous people uh, whose names are escaping me right now. But Crowley was then and, and Parsons were super fucking important and their relationship was weird and tangly and interesting and we should do a whole episode on them. Yeah. I mean, I think Crowley as a whole is a really interesting character and oh, I would yeah. be interested to learn more about honestly Parsons' scientific contributions. Yeah, so. it's all really interesting. I think we would need Kevin on board to help us understand that. I read a lot about it and I was just like, eh. Yeah, I thought he does chemistry. I, well, I guess, huh? It is chemistry. Yeah, yeah, that is that is true. It is chemistry. So, interesting. Cool. Well, um, that's all I have. Um, my only speculation. So, if Russia got to space before the U.S., right? And if Parsons was doing sex magic to contribute to the U.S.'s uh, space program, does that mean in Russia they were doing sex magic? Like, is that... I don't know. I should hope so. No. Interesting. That's an interesting thing to think about. Rasputin was there, and he was definitely doing weird sex things. That's for sure. Is he still alive? No. I was like, yeah. But I'm just saying the seeds. Yeah. (laughs) Were planted, if you will. No, no, no. (laughs) Gross. (laughs) (laughs) And on um, that note, on that note, where can they find us, Megan? Uh, they can find us on Spotify and Anchor and uh, Apple Podcasts. Like that's, that's a big one. Spotify and Apple Podcasts are two top ones, the top dogs. You can also, if you want to see our beautiful faces, check us out on YouTube. Um, uh, check out our TikToks and uh, slide into Hannah's DMs on mm-hmm. Instagram on because she she runs that. Um, I sure do. Ten Hat Time Podcast at Instagram. Uh, email us Ten Hat Time Podcast at gmail dot com if uh, you've ever done a sex magic ritual. I want to hear about it. Ooh. Yes, that would be so interesting. Let us know. Um, we'll read your email on the pod. And if you want us to, we'll leave it anonymous. But tell us about your sex magic ritual and whether or not it worked. Because if so, I'm going to wank on a sigil. Yeah, yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, please rate, review, and subscribe. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.